This week has been a bumper week for community goal rewards. I'm here on the Colonia Community Goals screen, which is the place I recommend if you want to figure out what's going on. It's actually better than the in-game Galnet interface. Um, today, the rewards are uh, finishing the Colonia Bridge, but included in the rewards were a size 3, size 4, and size 6 frameshift drive. And the blueprints, they describe them as being fast boot and range optimized. Now, I don't know how many new players we picked up with Odyssey, but Frontiers actually offered this reward before. They did it with the size 5A frameshift drive. If you want to get full details on this particular module, which is available from the tech brokers, right? Um, and has been since, I think, a week or two after the initial community goal. Um, this was offered all the way back in February. Uh, I'm assuming, for the purposes of this video, that the blueprints are going to be the same because at the time of recording, I actually don't have access to the stored modules yet. I think they're going to drop here sometime soon. But the original blueprint for the Tech Broker Engineered Frameshift Drive uh, had a boot time of 2 seconds and an optimized mass of 1785 tons, which on the size 5A represented a 70% improvement. I'm assuming that we're going to have the same architecture for the 5A frameshift drive offered earlier this year deployed on these new frameshift drives. And this is actually uh, pretty significant because offering that same architecture on the 3A, 4A, and 6A frameshift drives brings a pretty significant benefit to almost every ship in the game now. Um, here on my Coriolis screen, I actually have these sorted by frameshift drive size. Uh, in order smallest to largest on the bottom. The original size 5 offering was significant at the time because there are more ships in the game with a size 5 frameshift drive than there are anything else, mostly medium and one large ship. Having the size 3, 4, and 6 frameshift drives added to the list means that now there are only three ships? No, there's five ships in the game that don't have tech broker frameshift drives. And those are at the very top of the queue with the Beluga Liner, Imperial Cutter, and Type 10. And then down here at the very bottom of the queue with the Hauler and the Sidewinder, which I don't think there will be very many players too offended with, although I would love to see these uh, enhanced tech broker frameshift drives available for the Beluga Liner and Imperial Cutter specifically, since both of those ships are occasionally used in exploration, but the Imperial Cutter is a prolific trader and People love it for how fast it flies. Giving that thing more jump range will make a lot of trade people really happy. But we'll save that for another day. Uh, if you're, if you happened to be lucky enough to have gotten into the top 75%, um, the applications for this frameshift drive are pretty extensive. So if you're, uh, if you got the size three module reward, uh, that's relevant to the Adder, Eagle, Imperial Courier. Imperial Eagle and Viper. Of Out of this group of ships, the Imperial Courier is probably the most uh, effective explorer. I actually favor the Imperial Courier when I know I'm going to visit surface sites because it's smaller than the Diamondback Explorer and has a better chance at fitting readily into difficult terrain. I love the hell out of that ship too because when you need to explore a large amount of surface on a planet, which can happen occasionally, uh, with the Palin Enhanced Thrusters, you've got the ability to boost to, frankly, ridiculous speeds, and it makes it super easy to do grid searches and scope out different planetary surface things that might come up in the future. Uh, it also means that your transit time to planetary surfaces is dramatically reduced, so it's really, really practical. The rest of these ships, uh, with the exception of the Adder, which is supposed to be kind of like a really, really light-duty trade ship, uh, they're all combat ships. The Eagle, Imperial Eagle, and the Viper are core combat and are basically only used for that purpose, although I have occasionally seen a few people mod out the Eagles to do light ex exploration, lighter than the Courier. Um, the Viper's combat only, and is also known for having really terrible jump range, so I think we'll see a few combat enthusiasts maybe stick their size 3 on the Viper, or potentially I think more often on the Courier. Size 4 frameshift drives are relevant to the Asp Scout, Cobra 3 and 4, Diamondback Scout, Dolphin, Fertilance, Keelback, Mamba, Type 6 Transporter, Viper Mark 4, which I don't think very many people use, and the Vulture. So 
we've got another big batch of mostly combat ships with a couple of good cargo ships. Uh, the Cobra actually has, I mean, as an all-arounder, has a pretty good jump range. And the Dolphin, being a luxury ship, is also known for being pretty easy to get uh, high jump ranges out of. So I think we'll probably see for exploration builds most of the deployments of this drive to the Cobra and the Dolphin. For combat purposes, though, I mean, you've got a lot more options. The Vulture is pretty difficult to get good jump ranges off of when you're doing core combat builds. If I build a ship for combat operations, specifically if I think I'm going to get engaged by a PvP, -er, I almost always go with a shielded frameshift drive because they love to shoot that stuff out, and it gives you time and it gives you time to think, and therefore more options to escape if you think you're going to lose. Viper Four is kind of junk. Um, the idea behind it was a larger platform with a bigger frameshift drive. So the Viper Four compared to the Viper is bigger and slower, but it jumps farther and is a little bit more fuel efficient. I think the description for it mentions uh, long range combat escort, but uh, in, in practice, the compromises are, are a little weird. And so most people stay away from the Viper four. Uh, type six is cargo, which is nice, I guess. But the Fertilance here, um, combat ships that are PVP oriented that like to troll around in open play, appreciate jump range wherever they can get it although it should be noted if you do stick this in a combat ship the integrity is lower than uh, than most frameshift drives which means it's easier to shoot out so if you are going to use this on a combat ship you will want to lean pretty hard into the shield tank which the fertilance is pretty good at so um, for combat ships i think we'll see a lot of these frameshift drives wind up in the fertilance um, and and may uh, maybe the vulture uh, it, the thing is, with the Vulture, I think that most people use that. That's more PvE-focused, so I don't know. I guess we'll see. Uh, if you guys want to comment on how you're planning to use this, you could stick that down below, and you guys can have a good discussion about it. I can add my input where relevant. Uh, we'll skip all the fives, because the fives are covered in this video. You guys can go and watch it if you want to uh, understand more about it. The sixes for frameshift drives, there's only three ships that, that actually use that platform. But one of them is the Anaconda, which is pretty much the only thing people are going to care about for size six frameshift drives. I can pretty much guarantee that almost everybody who gets one is going to stick it in here. Uh, with a couple of PvE enthusiasts probably tapping up the Corvette and the cargo guys maybe sticking it in the Type 9 Heavy. Um, none of which are bad options. I just think that the Anaconda is the superior option because... Uh, I don't know what they make that hull out of, but it's so light that, that any gains you can get in mass reduction or optimal mass improvement mean a pretty dramatic hit to your jump range. Which I demonstrate here with an extremely lightweight Coriolis build, basically just slapping together some of the basics that people might stick on a ship, um, like a planetary vehicle hanger. I know uh, explorers like to put you know, maybe a large collector Olympic controller in their vessel so that they don't have to try to manually cargo scoop. But um, this is uh, this is pretty big. Look at this: a max light year jump range of 84.65, with an unladen jump of 81.28, and a fully laden jump. At least with this build, I imagine um, if you put together a fully assembled exploration build, that your numbers will be lower. But this is just to demonstrate possibilities. I have manually input the blueprint figures for the 6A frameshift drive, assuming that the same blueprint is applied to it as was applied to the 5A. Uh, and that uh, that actually pretty readily pushes the Anaconda over 80 light years jump optimized, which is a number that explorers have been chasing for quite a while. To get that right now in an Anaconda, you have to strip it all the way down. Uh, having this new tech broker frameshift drive makes it a little bit easier to get high figures. It should be noted, though, that there is an, a, a diminishing returns effect uh, on travel time reductions with the frameshift drive. It's not a dramatic curve, but it is a curve. Uh, generally speaking, in exploration, if you get north of 50 light years, you've quote unquote arrived and have the capacity to visit most places in the galaxy. With fringe exploration ships who like to fly out on the very edges of the galactic arms or up on the very top and bottom of the galaxy, pushing for usually north of 70 to reduce their dependency on synthesis uh, but for brute force travel times these figures are uh, i can't remember how steep the curve drops off but i do remember that it you know it, it 
after you push north of 50 it starts to fall off a little bit so most explorers target for 50 to 70 and you're, you're generally considered to be okay uh, but there are min maxers who really love to see how much they can get out of it and this is this is going to give them a really good week to uh, play around with how their ships are set up to get good stuff out of this i know that the fuel rats are going to care a lot about these jump range figures because any reduction in travel times means in the event of a code red you're more likely to be able to save the commander who's in trouble so let's see i don't think there's anything else going on here that's too big of a deal although i would expect that this frame shift drive architecture will make its way to the tech brokers here in the coming weeks since the 5a did um, i'm hoping that frontier decides not to keep this reserved i i'm inclined to start calling these exotic modules just because the uh, the, the gameplay mechanic and the way it's structured uh, they're they're basically exotic modules they function like exotics in any other mmo uh, I would hope that they don't become this rare thing where you can only get them at specific events because it does, at least for frameshift drives, lock a lot of commanders out of being able to earn them. My one complaint with this week's event is that it finished so quickly that there are a lot of people who would have participated that didn't get the chance because this thing basically wrapped up before the work week was even over. Like. People got home Friday night and discovered that this thing was most of the way done and probably didn't have enough time to get their resources together to finish it. I had to stay up till 2 in the morning to be able to just do the four runs in a Type 9 necessary to be able to get everything together uh, and then jump my fleet carry into the system and do four runs to get everything unloaded. And the system where this was taking place was so clogged, as were its surrounding systems, I actually had to park my fleet carrier in a system that required me to travel 30,000 light seconds to be able to get uh, where I needed to, to go to pick my stuff up. And it really sucked. Um, I'm hoping we get a round two on this at some point, or at least that the tech brokers offer it at a discount so that everybody who didn't get a chance to participate can pick this up. Because otherwise, I think we're going to have a lot of people really irritated with how this was, uh, how this was conducted on Frontier's side. But that's all I've got for today. So if you guys have any comments or questions or ideas or want to share how you're going to use this drive, uh, go ahead and leave those in the comments. I'll give my input where relevant and I'll catch you guys later.